Big boy. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? This is the most dangerous snake on the planet to handle. Look at this beast of a king cobra. You good, buddy? Woo! Sanctuary. Mm, I love you, Bagoy. What's going on, beautiful people? We're out here in the backyard, and we just finished up the beautiful new Mew for Bagoy. Uh, thank you very much, Firefighter Jeff, for busting your butt out here and making this beautiful Mew. So for those of you guys who aren't familiar with this type of enclosure for birds of prey, it is key for birds of prey in captivity to have these visual barriers so they don't fly into the wire. So that's why you guys haven't seen videos of Bagoy in this enclosure, because uh, after I put them in here, I realized I really need to turn into a mew and not just have wires. So Bagoy now has this big, beautiful area to fly back and forth. He's got this nice tin roof, so it keeps him out of the rain, but it's very important to have sunlight for his development, his feathers, his growth. So there are areas where he can be in the sun if he wants. And he has all this area to fly up up. My beautiful boy, Bagoy, this is all for you, my boy. Are you get all fluffy because you hear the camels? He's just like, oh, what'd you do to the place? What'd you do to the place? So this will actually make him feel more comfortable when he's in this enclosure, because you can't forget there are birds of prey out here that want to fight with him because a Eurasian eagle owl is very similar to the horned owl here in North America, which actually eats other birds of prey, eats the babies of other birds of prey, like Cooper's hawks and other types of birds of prey out here. So he's a top predator and all the local birds know it and they fear him. They fear Bagoy. They can literally turn their head 270 degrees. Oh, look at that. And they have what's called a blood pooling system. So when they twist their head like that and the circulation's cut, their brain and eyes still function so they can keep looking around. So you can turn and see if there's a predator behind them or what the deal is. And the way that they can twist their neck like this is because they have double the amount of vertebrae in their neck. So we have seven and these guys have 14. Quit showing off. I wish I could, I wish I could do that. We reinforced the wire up top with bull panel or hog panel. It's that thick, about six to nine gauge wire. So no birds of prey are gonna be breaking through here trying to fight with Bagoy or vice versa because Bagoy is a top predator. Have a look at those talents. These talents, ooh, you would not want to be a rabbit, a fox, or a chihuahua around this type of bird of prey. All right, Bagoy, we're gonna let you enjoy the new enclosure. You enjoy the digs. Let's go see what's going on with the crocodilians. I got a whole bag of squid from, from Publix and we're gonna go feed to the grass. Let's go. Uh -huh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> What's going on, beautiful people? Just hanging out with the camels, giving them some treats. We're halter training them so they're nice and well adapted to having these halters on their face so we can walk around the property. And they're not just free roaming camels like they usually are. You want another treat? <laughs> Dromedary camels. You just gotta love them. They're like big horses, but with a hump where you're supposed to sit. Right? Jimmy, you want some? Who's your big boy? And Camille's basically already halter trained. You put the halter up and he puts his face right in it. Nothing like hanging out with my camel boys. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Oh, oh. All right, beautiful people. We're going to feed some crocodilians. First off, we're going to feed a little chick to the smooth front caiman. This is Blue. Blue is one of the first crocodilians that I got with my license. And I've been raising him up since he was the size of a gecko. Come on. Come on, Blue. Why are you acting so slow? Come on, Blue. There you go. Beautiful smooth fronted caiman. Got a nice little scrumptious squid right here. Nothing nothing like a little bit of tentacles from my baby. Ooh, oh, oh Ziggy. You want some squid? Come on, baby, you want some squid? Oh, you want, oh, you want some squid? Oh, she likes the squid. I don't think I've ever fed her squid before. So this is a nice little change in the diet. Got some squid. Oh, nice little chunk of squid right there. Let's get a bigger piece for these guys being an oceanic crocodile, feeding on all kinds of stuff that gets near those jaws. Come on, Ziggy. Come on, Ziggy. Oh, you got a little bit. You got a little bit. Oh, nice little treat for you. Oh yeah, nothing like some squid. Oh, nothing like some squid. Oh, there you go, baby. She loves the squid. Give her the, the bulkiest part of the squid. Oh, okay, get that squid, baby. Oh, oh, come on. There you go, good girl. She is great at catching squid. We also got some rats here so she can get a good, good old meal. Come on, baby. Whoa, oh, oh, there we go. You can see the size she's putting on. And she's got a beautiful head. We give her a nice variety of food. Raised her up from a little hatchling, so she's got a great natural looking head work. Ooh, look at that. Nothing but a nice rat. Come on. Come on. 
How about a chick? Let's give you a chick so you get some bird in your diet. Ziggy. Come on, Ziggy. Come on. Come on. Woo, come on, Ziggy. Oh, oh, come on. Good girl. Beautiful American crocodile. Anakin. Beautiful saltwater crocodile. Oh, there we go. Grabbing food off the tongs. You can eat it. Come on. I'm going to steal from you. Sometimes if you pretend to steal it from them, they eat it faster. Anakin, you want some squid? Yeah, some squid for my boy. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Here we have a gorgeous Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. This was a gift from Justin Brown from the Mayaka Croc Farm. Let's see if she wants some squid. Oh, no problem eating squid. I'm actually going to throw a little bit of squid in the water too so the turtle can eat because we have a giant Amazon River turtle in there as well. Want some rats? Come on. Come on, get up on the platform. Show your size. Show everyone how beautiful you Come on. Come on, show everyone how beautiful you are. Come on. Come on, get your butt up there. Come on. Come on. Woo, those jaws. Do you hear that? You want some food? There you go. Beautiful girl. She is a beast of a Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Super terrestrial crocodile crawling around at night looking for snails and other things to eat. Beautiful Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Cranky and the world's smallest crocodilian. Want some more? Come on. Come on, come on, woo, come on. She is so beautiful. I love the red head they have. Come on. Oh, you gotta swallow first. There you go, baby. Come on. Woo, come on. There you go. Whoa, give it a little thrash. Big old Cuban crocodile. She's a with my chicken. I'll feed you tomorrow. Ooh, what are you doing, Bridget? My beautiful broad snouted caiman. I've had this girl the longest of all the crocodilians. And as you guys know, we just got her a boyfriend, so that's really good. Come on, come on, oh, you cranky girl, come on, there you go. I'm gonna get you, want a rat? I got a good sized rat here. Come on, come on, come on, Ooh, come on baby, come on baby, come on, come on, come on. A little bit of effort, a little bit of effort, come on. There you go baby, beautiful broad snouted caiman. Cayman, lateral stress, scientifically speaking. Gotta watch, make sure she doesn't crunch on my fingers. Woo, woo -hoo -hoo. There you go, baby. She's such a good looking animal. You can tell she's hungry. I got some, some rat pups right here. Huh? Oh, 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 chill, chill. There you go. These guys are gonna be monsters before you know it. Oh, oh, oh a little bit of squid for you, boy. They're so cute. A little squid. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry, do you feel left out, buddy? Here you go. All right, who's hungry? Aries. Good boy. Easy. Good boy. Woo! -hoo. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's why Cuban Cross is so dangerous. They'll gallop on the land, they'll run around. Hope you got a chicken they didn't see. Gotta utilize all the chicken, give these guys good exercise, make them work for their food. With the new exhibits, we'll have more land to work around to make it a lot safer, because obviously, it's not that safe to work with crocodiles in close quarters like this. Aries. Easy. Oh, uh-oh. Over there. He's a big boy. But even though he looks massive, for a crocodile, he's not that big. He's actually roughly about 10 feet long on an average, and now crocodile would be 15 to 20 feet long, so he's just a little guy. Woo! Nothing like feeding crocodiles. It's one of my favorite things to do. I am a snake lover, but crocs have always had my heart first. All right. You got chicken over here, buddy. You don't see the chicken right there? Come on. I'm gonna lead him to that chicken in front of his face. There we go. That's all I want him to grab that. And Miss Toothy, I think, is right here blowing bubbles. Here she is. Woo! Big boy! Gorgeous now, crocodile. Ooh, and a quick little update on the new broad snout came in. He's doing really good. He's already chowing down on food. And as you can see, he's a little beast. Boy, he's a little tight. Oh, look at so cute! How can you not love? Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. A little broad snout came in. Such a cute little dinosaur. They literally look like a little T-Rex. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you can see those little things popping out of his throat right there. 
Those are actually uh, femoral glands. They actually put out a scent in the mating season, or if they're getting real territorial and pissed. Oh, I'm so sorry. And that's a call to mama saying, hey, come kill this guy. He's so cute. And you can see he looks a little bit darker than when I first got him because he's in a black tub now and he's adapting to his environment. Crocodilians can actually change color to adapt to their surroundings, kind of like a chameleon. Isn't that cool? Little broad snouted caiman, a little beast named Brucey. All right, beautiful people. We're gonna be cleaning some snakes. We got the mamba with our lots of spicy meat bowls all over the enclosure. I wanna make sure we do this nice and safe. This is Kobe the black mamba. He's a big, beautiful black mamba, a young male that's probably pushing like seven plus feet now. He's getting huge. We just wanna get him away from all these sticks right here. Oh boy. Oh boy, come on, Kobe. Come, come with me, Kobe. Come on. Get him off those sticks. Oh my goodness. Look at, ooh, look how huge he is getting. Ooh, ooh, yikes. Going up the snake hook. You can see he's flaring up like a cobra. How cool is that? Mambas, even though they're not. Ooh, look at that. Even though they're not actual cobras, they're in the cobra family. So when they're upset, they'll actually hood up and raise their body above the ground, just like a cobra would, and flatten out their neck just a little bit. But they don't have that big hood. What's going on, dude? Oh, look at that. How cool is that? How cool is that? But obviously he is a dangerous snake and you don't want to play games with a snake like this. This is the most dangerous snake on the planet to handle. They have an extremely powerful neurotoxic venom and it will shut down your body in a split second. We're just going to try and get him into this holding receptacle, AKA a brew can. There we go. Ooh, black mamba. And now we have the pleasure of cleaning the spiciest meatballs. AKA Mamba Duty. It's my duty to clean the Mamba Duty. Let me get knuckle deep in there. Ooh, this one's a little bit wet. I'll see you guys in a split. Oh, 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 I can't, I don't want to split. These pants, they don't do well with splits. Let me, let me stop now. Wow, ooh, look at that. Beautiful Chandler's Wildlife Midwest tongs. Tong, custom engraving. Follow your dreams, baby. What you doing if you're not following your dreams? My dream is to work with reptiles, specifically Crocodiles and venomous reptiles, my favorite. So let's get Kobe the Black Mamba back where he belongs. Oh, surprisingly, he's at the bottom of the can. Usually he's up top, you can actually see. I'll get a mamba in a trash can. Would you look at that? So we're just gonna gently bring him out, make this nice and smooth. Bring him right where he wants to go, and that's home. There you go, buddy, right there for you. We're gonna have to upgrade him to the biggest arboreal vision cage that they make. So hopefully we can get a little sponsorship going with Vision. Ooh, look at that mouth. Look at that. Ooh, that's why they call him the Black Mamba. Because inside that mouth is the pitch black pigment. As a warning to stay back, the black void will get you. All right, next is Big Bertha, the mother of all those baby cobras. She's exploded out of her skin. As you can see, she's got broken up shed all over the place and some spicy meat balls. So I'm just gonna open this up. Let's take her out, see how she's doing. Hopefully she's pumping some more weights. Oh yeah, she's putting a lot more weight since the last time we've dealt with her. There we go, just gotta get that hook in place. Look at her beautiful monocled cobra, Big Bertha. The original cobra that I handled when I was a young lad growing up in the venomous snake handling world. Look at that beautiful monocled cobra. Not as uh, spectacular as like an albino or anything like that. It's just your basic monocled cobra. But depending on where they come from, in their range, they'll have different patterns and uh, different coloration. Whee, relax. She's not too bad. She's a lot of, a lot of huff and puff. She will bite you if you're not careful, but she's just a big, beautiful girl that deserves her respect. Ooh, okay. We'll put her right into the can. Close this baby up. Oh, sorry. Let's get into cleaning the spiciest meatballs you ever laid your eyes on. I wish you could smell this haggis. Ooh. And we got Kevin right here munching down on a ball python. We weren't able to get any Burmese pythons this month, so he's chewed on a big old ball python as a meal. Look at this beast of a king cobra. He's just gnawing away, having a good meal. Oh, look at that. What a beast of a king cobra. Kevin the king cobra munching down on a big old meal. You see that? Ooh, you see that right there? That hole right here, that is the extended trachea. Ooh, the king cobra or any snake that allows them to breathe while swallowing down a huge meal. Snakes are just so bizarre and amazing at the same time. Look at that, he is such a dragon. Ooh, look at that. 
Oh my goodness. What a beast. Look at him. He's just crawling up the plant. What are you doing, bro? You're just crushing that bamboo. Oh! What a beast. Ophiophagus hannah, the eater of other snakes. Ooh. It's been a long time since we filmed Kevin eating a snake. Look at that. You can see those little gummy sheets under the top jaw. Under those little sheets are the fangs of the king cobra. Not as long as a viper, but king cobras definitely have extremely long fangs compared to any other cobra out there. Even though they're technically not a true cobra, they're in their own genus. Ooh, look, he's going to work now. You can actually hear the fangs pulling at the skin and going against the scales. He's making quick work of it. Look at this guy. He is a beast of a king cobra. Takes down a snake like it's nothing. They'll be eating rat snakes like red tail racers. Uh, radiated rat snakes, they'll be eating reticulated pythons in the wild, Burmese pythons. They go all the way from India, all the way out through Asia to Southeast Asia and places like Borneo and other spots in Indonesia. Look at him. Such a massive king cobra. He is a true king. Like, he's probably one of the biggest king cobras to ever be in the U.S. You enjoying that? Oh my goodness. You hear him gurgling? and like nothing, slurps it up like spaghetti. You good, buddy? Oh, oh I'm sorry. You're good. Here, you wanna hand me the camera? I'll get us. Ooh, look at that. You happy? Ooh! You good, buddy? It's like I'm in that movie, series of unfortunate events. It's okay, buddy, do your thing. Enjoy your meal. And no mistake. No, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Ooh, he is happy. And uh, I think uh, this young lady right here is pretty happy too with her Chandler's Wildlife merch. Oh, damn! Get on the Chandler's Wildlife website, get your own merch, book your tour, come see Kevin in person. Also, come see me at the Skills Expo coming up October 21st and 22nd. What's going on, Bertha? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Come with me. Come with me, I have much to show you. Ooh, beautiful monocled cobra. My girl. Huh, you wanna look at me? No, she's like, put me back. I've had enough of you. I don't blame you. Oh, 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 there you go. And of course, uh, we did rehome all those baby covers like we were talking about. I ended up keeping one really pretty one. So in future episodes, we'll show you guys that cover. It's got a really cool looking hood. We're gonna lock this up and secure it. Uh, we got a lot of cleaning to do, but for this episode, because it's late at night, we're just gonna knock out one or two more things. My little puff adder friend, please don't bite me. I just noticed that the puff adder rubbed his poop all over the glass, so we're gonna skip doing the King Brown next and take this puff adder out. Call it a puff adder, because they puff up at you when they're upset, and so far from what I eat, they're good. Let's just get them out nice and calm. Uh-oh, he's puffing, that's not good. Man, these snakes are dense. You wouldn't think that a snake that's about three, four feet long would be so heavy, but this snake is super, super dense. Gotta be very careful. Oh, there we go, just get that puff adder hooked right. Let's actually put the puff adder on the floor real quick so you guys can see how these guys caterpillar across the landscape. Watch this. Look at this, look at this. Oh, look at this. How cool is that? Ooh, the little puff adder train. Choo choo. He's like, I gotta get out of here, mate. Oh, I got the, oh, what's that smell? It smells like mamba. There's actual footage of black mambas eating puff adders on the road in safaris. That's pretty crazy. In the wilds of Africa. So just like a, a king cobra or really any type of a lapid with that powerful neurotoxic venom, they will eat other snakes. Coral snakes do this, uh, different species of cobra, and of course the king of all snakes, the king cobra. I gotta be real careful when I reach too far up the snake to grab its tail, because this snake could whip back in a split second, and it's got such a nasty necrotic bite, it will cause gangrene, rotting your flesh off. It's a nasty, nasty bite. We're gonna put them in the can, so we can hold them right in there while we clean this enclosure because this guy's a Picasso and he rubbed that spicy meatball all over the place. All right, time to take, oh, he's puffing up, he's not happy. Time to take Thomas the train out. I think that's what uh, his new name is gonna be because I've never actually named this puff adder. 
And Shannon and I were talking, we think Thomas the Train would be a great name, so we'll just name him Thomas for short. <laughs> Mr. T, what's going on, dude? And they feel so strange, they feel like, like rubber almost. And they have these peeled scales, like the Rhino Viper, so it's a rough feeling scale for being amongst the rocky outcrops and spiny bushes when they hide in Africa. Look at that, beautiful snake. And these guys will sit still for up to a month doing nothing, waiting for some food to come by, and they'll strike out. So they're ambush predators, sometimes being opportunistic, maybe eating some roadkill or something like that. But these guys are badass. Locked and secure. Next up, we're gonna be dealing with the King Brown. So this is the Pygmy King Brown, AKA uh, Mr. Brown from Brown Town, as I like to say. And he's, he's not the biggest King Brown out there. True King Brown can get about eight foot and they have the largest venom yield of any venomous reptile in Australia. And these guys actually have a nasty gangrenous bite as well. And there was a man who was bitten on his hand and uh, surgery after surgery due to infection, this guy actually lost all the way up to his shoulder with the venom. So it is no joke. And this guy just came out of shed and you can see he looks sexy. I love Australian snakes. To you guys, it looks like just some brown snake. Woo! But to me, this is one of the coolest snakes on the planet. Eee, the King Brown from Australia. I was lucky enough to catch a small King Brown when I was in Australia last with Ricky Mack over in uh, the Perth area on the west coast of Australia. And I hope one day I can get back out to Australia to catch a real true King Brown about eight feet long. So I can, woo, gotta be really careful with these guys, they're no joke. Well, look at that beautiful King Brown. We're gonna stick him right into the can. Beautiful boy. Nasty, nasty venom yield, but he's looking good. Nothing like an Aussie. All right, so let me take out all this shed. It's, he's exploded out of this stuff. We're gonna get him some fresh water and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, beautiful people. Let's put this King Brown back where he belongs. Easy peasy, Mr. Brown. You can see he looks gorgeous. He's just got that nice creamy, creamy beige looking color to him. Super beautiful snake. All right, beautiful people. That's gonna be it for this episode. We're gonna put Mr. Brown back. I will see you later, Mr. Brown. See you in the next episode. Be well. Don't jump out the cage next time. Thank you very much. I'm gonna close this up, lock it up, make sure it's nice and secure. Good to go. All right, beautiful people. That's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you guys love. Life's too short not to do what you guys love. My life is full of ups and downs, but at least I'm doing what makes me happy. And that's working with wildlife, educating people, and getting close, real close, to spicy meatballs and reptiles. Yeah! I'll see you on the next one. Woo! I'm a witch. Two, 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 nine, nine.